Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the Tomato Timer and today I'm joined by Melissa Wright, a French modern art painter born in Paris and currently based in Stirling, Scotland, where she's studying law and politics and alongside her artist career, she's also a model, a singer and an actress. Melissa, it's so good to have you. How are you? Hi, thank you for having me today. So it's also a big pleasure for me to join you on the platform. Thank you so much. Um, I have to say, you know, your bio is like, it's so incredible. The fact that you're studying law and politics, which is often re regarded as such a regimented, you know, subject with such yeah. clear defined lines, and then your incredibly artistic endeavors. Um, how does that fit together? How, how did it come about even? So, I mean, I know, like, it looks kind of opposite when you mm. first take a glance on it. But for me, I think it's kind of complementary because, like, when you study, for example, uh, something rigid like law and politics, like, you know, you, you kind of need a certain way to, you know, it's like get outside, like, just, like, having creative things, like, close to, to you or, like, just express yourself in another way. And in that sense, for me, it appeared kind of, like, complementary because, like, I, at the same time, in law and politics, I kind of find a certain inspiration, like, some topics that I'm actually passionate about, about or, like, social, more, like, you know, social issues, political issues, like, mm -hmm. things are kind of connected and... For me, arts in, in general is kind of also a way to to kind of turn all this issue in another way or another perspective. So mm -hmm. yes, you know, it's I like it personally. It's my yeah. weird mix. <laughs> well, I love it, and I, I love the the two aspects you mentioned: the fact that it gives you an outlet for creativity, but also, and I want to get back onto this point because you said the messaging, how you're able to encapsulate messages within art and share them share them the different perspectives so talk me through that how have you been um you know using your art forms in the different ways because you know yeah. um, whether it's painting whether it's music whether it's acting or modeling these are all you know forms of art how are each of them able to represent your belief systems your ideas and things you want to see change in the world so to be honest, I think each type of art has its own like value or its own way to depict or share something. And, you know, I feel like for me, I'm passionate sometimes about the technique in itself because like painting or music, some, sometimes like the way you express a message appear like differently, but at the same time, it kind of impact the person who receive it in a specific mm -hmm. way that you want it, you know what I mean? And like, for me, for example, like if you take acting or if you take a uh, modeling thing, in those, you know, in a way they're all interconnected, but at the same time, it's like just exploring a multitude of, you know, different way to actually say the same thing or mm -hmm. kind of, you know what I mean? So, and I, I pretty like this idea. I, I pretty like, you know, if you're like a, a bit adventurer and you like trying new things, trying like, you know, it's, sometimes it's not completely new, but like, it's kind of you, you enter in a new field that you kind of have like, you know, you kind of touch a bit before, but without really going deeper in it. And you just, it's a way for you to open doors, I guess, you know? No way. <laughs> I do, and I, I wanted to touch upon one thing that you said, the fact that it has different, uh, the mediums themselves have a different way of connecting with people. So yeah. how have you found, or what are you, based on your experiences or, or otherwise, the fact that, you know, some people are, don't think that they're, they like traditionally, they don't like art, but they, they love to listen to a certain type of music or they don't like to go to museums, but they like to do this. Um, so there's this way of connecting with human beings through art, um, but each person, each human being has their own perception of what art is and a, and a way that, and, and, and an art form often that attracts them more than others. So do you think having almost that you're you have a more wider array of you know mediums that you propagate your art or your messaging through has that allowed you to be connecting with people 
differently? And have you noticed differences in people who, let's say, prefer painting over music, over et cetera, et cetera? Yes, uh, definitely, because I do believe that, you know, uh, in your everyday life, uh, most of the time, there so there's some topics that you don't really talk about, or you, like, it's not... It's a bit hard to like, you know, it sometimes can appear a bit too deep or philosophical in a sense. And art kind of take um, a certain, you know, you kind of use art like, you know, different type of art to actually like express it, to communicate with people on certain things, certain field. And just like, like you say, it's like a connection that you established mm -hmm. through art. And yeah people some some people have like some preference there's also a lot of prejudices like you know like in art as well like some most of the time people like paintings for example the image that's like only museum is like it's like specific paint or sometimes they don't understand what's like how you know to read a painting or how to feel like kind of connected with like mm -hmm. a drawing or anything but it's i do believe that sometimes it's not just the technique that you observe in it like you know, there's you, sometimes you can just look at an image or a drawing and anything and feel like a strong emotion about something because the way it's made, like you feel like, wow, this is like sublime. This is like there's something that you feel like you're concerned in a way. And this is what an artist kind of look for, you mm know, -hmm. because it's this is the goal. You, ha you have to provoke something. And in the fact that you provoke it, like, the person understand in a way what you wanted to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so, uh, and actually you talk about prejudices and we talk a lot, like the, the very common phrase that's thrown around is art for art's sake. Is that true or is art always have a deeper message, underlying message? So, well, to be honest, I do feel like art is kind of connected to philosophy, like, uh, you know, um, paintings, drawing, and everything. I mean, now it depends on the artist as well, because some artists, they base themselves. It can be on the technique, it can be on a certain abstract or nonsense thing, can be like really, you know, spiritual. It, like, you know, I think the artist sometimes, even by the fact that they represent a nonsense thing, kind of means something. Mm. And And the thing is like, you have it's just not about looking it's just not about the appearance there's like a story behind and this is where it's like the beauty of like admiring art is it's like when you do when you make the connection between the message and the appearance of the art itself that you understand in a way and that you get like into a deeper topic which is like i mean for me which is the passionating aspect of making art, I guess. Mm. So tell me about your story, because I had a chance to look through your portfolio and it was incredible. I was like, really loved the different um, styles and vibrance of your art. But where does your origin, where is your influence coming from so, when you produce art? So there is so much to say, because like, I do believe that the hard part in like becoming an artist is to find your style. And it takes a really long time sometimes. Mm -hmm. And for me, so I just gathered a lot of aspects that I personally like enjoy or, you know, that I just like to see like in my environment and thing. For example, there's a lot of composite, composite that I gather in fact i like the the contrast because i like contrasting thing like in the image like you know opposite together i try to mix like you know sometimes a really cool larval cubic like way with like uh you know greek uh, images and stuff really monochromatic and thing you know it's like gathering opposite together this is the base of my style and now after that you have a lot of small details as well like for example um because my mother is from the drc uh it's like in the culture there is really like you know color for you have a lot of uh, you know like image and you know it's it's really vibrant and mm -hmm. so i wanted to i wanted that to be a part of my style as a sort of uh, you know little just you know 
be murder, I guess, maybe, I don't know. But at the same time, like, I had, like, a, um, I always admired, you know, like, in museum and thing, you have this statue of, like, Greek gods, like, really beautiful, really, you know what I mean? Like, it kind of gave a sort of Oster space, but at the same time, it's really classic, really sovereign thing. And I wanted as well that to be in my work, and so mixing both kind of style, that was like the challenge. But mm. I, I, you know, just like by doing it several times, I kind of find my way to mix both, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it, it, it sounds incredibly contradictory. And almost I, I feel like the theme uh, in your story, in your personal story is about not contradictions as, as much as... Um, slightly or at least perceived contradictions right when you talk about mm. art and and law we talk about uh classical art and and very vibrant abstracted art we talk about um these different like these opposites sometimes uh but the fact that they play so well together color and monochromatic um that's that's incredible it's, it's so lovely to um i find it incredible to understand the story of the artist and then look at their art as well mm. because then it just adds a new layer of meaning because you see, ah, oh, that's where her uh, her kind of upbringing is coming, or her or her family heritage is, is coming through, or 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 so forth. I wanted to talk about so obviously art has been for for a very long period of its of its existence, or maybe not. Maybe that's that's an incorrect way of putting it. But you know, popularized art was something that was enjoyed by a certain class of people. Uh, for a long period of time and it was you know it's considered an upper class thing and uh something that you know normal people could not access obviously that's changing a lot um i wanted to touch upon well a bit of a broad topic and i'm happy for you to there's no specific question here um inclusivity in art the fact that there is so much beautiful uh conceptualizations and origins and stories to, that artists have to tell that come from different backgrounds how is that going about how are we are we seeing that is that possible now and particularly through the different forms that the internet allows us to give you know we have social media which is making it so easy and so so accessible for us to be sharing our content with such a huge amount of people um is that a good thing is that a bad thing has it led to more inclusivity has it led to more uh diversity in in the art forms that we're able to see and enjoy? Or is it also a challenge because it's overcrowding and uh, anyone can put anything up and actually not be authentic, et cetera, et cetera? So first, I would say that, you know, like everything, there's kind of both sides. There's, of course, advantages. There's, of course, inconvenient. Firstly, you know, when you actually say that, you know, historically, like art was like associated with a sort of upper class thing, like, you know, I do believe that, you know, because back at the time, culture in itself hmm. was like accessible to a certain type of people. And, you know, it can be like certain, you know, music, art. And it was like, in a way, a sort of, um, you know, like social recognition thing, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And nowadays, like you said, uh, with internet, culture is everywhere. Like it's the, ma it's the mainstream thing. Like you, you just open your computer, go online, and, you know, whenever you go, you have this kind of like access to culture. And yes, there's inconvenient an advantage when you are an artist. I don't know if like as 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 a viewer, like I'm not sure that it's actually an inconvenient because you can have access to you can have a sort of um, you have access to so many things. You have the freedom to choose any, anyway, and you have different type of style and things. So you just have to find yourself, find what you're looking for. But as an artist, it's a bit different because it's like a sort of market when like you stop producing your art and everything. And yes, you can, you know, you can just put your art like online and like create your platform and things, etc. But at the same time, because there is so much as well, it's like, how do you like, you know, show like you are like, how do you appear like your art is, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, so it's kind of, I think, personally, I do feel that it's a good thing because like there's more, you have the 
you have the opportunity to actually show you art. It's like you don't need to actually be in a museum or anything to uh, to have a certain uh, recognition and anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a started point at least. And from that, you can find opportunities because like, because everything is online doesn't mean that, you know, you can find people in the same situation or you can find people like more easily than back at the time as well. You know what I mean? So it's like a, it's like a sort of community thing in a way, but it's more accessible than how it was back at the time. So, Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it is definitely, uh, though it comes with challenges and maybe differentiating between artists will be harder and you'll always have, you know, not only that, but there, there are challenges around and you're a lawyer or going to be a lawyer. So you know how like, you know, people are going to be, um, you know, uh, uh, incorrectly stealing art and not not making credits and those relevant, those important things as well. So there is a challenge which comes because of this like globally distributed system by the same time it definitely has made stuff more accessible i wanted to um follow on because there's so many interesting topics to discuss with you because of your wide array of backgrounds um and come towards modeling and and there has been so much for some from for such a long period of time there's been so much stigma and perception around what models are what they're meant to be are they simply beautiful hangers to you know put clothes on or are they do they represent something else and uh i have very little experience in this so i would just love to understand from you um what it means to 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 do something to go into this this space of modeling yeah so to be honest uh, yes, like you said, there is a lot of uh, stigma around this uh, industry, and like I think recently, a lot of things kind of started to change as well. Um, when I say change, it's like more inclusivity. I mean, there's still some, you know, aspect like in the industry that kind of stay the same, but like in the mainstream media, because like people are asking and demand a certain new like redefinition of beauty and redefinition of you know they want to recognize themselves on the screen Mm. so in the industry as well because there is the demand the demand like they are aware of it and technically they try and you know they they just like put people that are more like they don't ask too much in the sense that how you should appear uh, they they want you to be authentic more than to be like to fit a certain image that probably you're not or something like that. So now I do believe that it's actually a great thing, but you know I think it needs time to like because it's still I'm sure that you know in, yeah it's still like something that is present. I haven't been like you know um, f- I haven't faced this kind of thing right now, and I'm glad. <laughs> So, yeah, you know. <laughs> but uh, I want to, like, follow up on that, though. Mm-hmm. There are still so many um, body image issues, um, yeah. especially for young people who are who are at such a, uh, a moldable age. You know, they're just simply looking and consuming content and thinking that they need to fit a certain type. Um, and unfortunately, we still know about or things come out from... The, the fashion and the modeling industry saying that, hey, if you aren't this many inches tall or this many inches this or that, you are not fit for the screen. Um, we hear a lot about misrepresentation or uh, racial biases, the fact that, you know, certain people or certain uh, things are, are preferred over others. And it, it it seems a bit weird now that we're at a we 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 can, we say that we're at a point in our society where we are so trying to be more inclusive and the you know culture is such an important part of our our you know our our beings intersectionalities should be our our, our beautiful uh, the most beautiful thing about human human beings and yet we still see and know and continuously hear on you know news channels and everything about the challenges that exist there so. I agree that there's going to be time that it takes for this to change. But what 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 else is like? What do you feel about this industry? Is it does it need a, a revamp? Is it heading to the right direction? 
Um, is it the demand of people? If we as consumers say that we're not going to watch fashion shows if they're not going to be, you know, ensuring the representation of all beauty types, then th is that the way it's going to go about? What, what are your feelings on that? So, you know, yes, I agree with you that, I, you know, it's really like paradoxical in a way because we want things to change, you know, like we want like inclusivity, we want a certain type of, uh, you know, beauty on screen, etc. And at the same time, we have so many content, we have people that, you know, even if you go online on social media and everything, you have image of where body, beautiful body type is, where beautiful face should be and stuff. And like in the model industry, I feel like, you know, what is fascinating about is like even some people want things to change, but like I feel like sometimes some people like the criticize, like there's like a lot of critic as well from the public. And if you appear a certain way too, you know, it's like, it's like this in between. It's like mm. people want things to change, but at the same time, if you appear imperfect, they are there to, you know, show you that you're imperfect. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I do believe that in this industry, this is the same. It's like people want things to change, but at the same time, stay on a certain criteria yeah. thing, but you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And this, the thing is like the model, the fashion industry know about it. And they, you know, um, I do believe that it's even in conscience, people without even remarking, even if they want things to change, they associate beauty with a certain type of definition. Mm. And those people, when, because their goal is sometimes to sell clothes and stuff, they have a clientele that, you know, kind of has standards and think they want the clothes to be like, you know, valuable, appear valuable and things. So those people, they are associated like those clothes with like a definition, but those people have also this definition. So it's like kind of changing the mentality and before changing the industry as well. Mm. So it's like a culture problem, I think more because the industry is just a reflect of the people who kind of, you know, it's the reflect of a certain clientele. Yeah. You don't understand what I mean? I, I do, I do. And it's it's a really interesting perspective. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. And um, it's a problem which perpetuates itself because yeah. uh, because of this contradiction, right? We we want our beauty to, or like definitions of beauty or this or representation to change. And yet at the same time, we have a preference when we, we we want to see more representation, but we're also the public is so critical about those people who go on. I mean, you just look at some of those um, slightly <laughs> slightly uh, under uh, maybe not as as maybe more sensationalized news pieces and articles which come out, and you just see like these celebrities or or popular you know figures who are you know ridiculed for not wearing this or that or made fun of this or they you know challenges if they're image is changing in some way if they're you know they would suddenly that yeah. there'll be like headlines about oh what is happening here and what is happening there so it's it's true like it's the the public is also perpetuating it unless we we change our cultural uh and social norms around what we perceive as beauty and ensure that it actually changes intrinsically then we can't expect the industry which is a reflection of our demands to to also change and i want to um because we're coming to closer to the end and i really wanted to ask one big question which we we heard about that you were recently in the in the biggest beauty pageant in france so how was that experience and and again some a, a space which is has so much stigma associated how is that evolving and, and what was your experience like so to be honest like you know the pageant contest was kind of my beginning like this is how I started like a bit everything with like the modeling and stuff and so it was for me like kind of a sort of door that get open and kind of lead me to other like opportunities and my experience of it was like it was like my first time because I did it twice but my first time like it was I just kind of learned like how this like were because it's like like you said it's like a beauty pageant contest and stuff and and it's really about appearance so you learn how to pose or to think and at first like the how you can see it is like a contest based mainly on appearance and and you know we don't we're not asking too much about like you know the candidates and things but like i do believe that nowadays um you know the people who organize this kind of contest they are kind of aware also of the image mm -hmm. uh they want to you know 
broadcast on platform and media and stuff. So they are looking for as well a certain, you have, because a passion contest is also like a way you can get, you, you get like a lot of, uh, uh, how, could, how can I say, you know, public who are like following you and like notoriety and everything, but you have to kind of have a project behind as well. You know, you're not just doing a pageant content because you want to have the title of like, oh, you were that beautiful that time and stuff. It's like kind of an opportunity to, to offer you a sort of, uh, you know, a chance to develop something afterwards. So they are looking for profile that can as well, like make a change after like mm. create something probably new or like have a sort of um you know just like being inventor or uh, like doing sort of social change or opening your own private businesses and stuff so it's kind of gradual but like i think the goal is to offer an opportunity to women to actually like become something more than just beauty you know it's it's like it's not Yes, of course, like you have some criteria to get in, but like it's not just about the title. Most of the time, those women are looking for something more than the title. Do you, you understand mm. what I mean? I so, do. And it, it, it is a platform which allows you, as you said, it opens so yeah. many doors for you. So it, it is it is something which if you are working on, especially pro projects which are social mission driven, they can this sort of system can actually give you the, the space to, you know, accelerate, amplify yeah. the work that you're doing. That's that's the idea. So, <laughs> which, which is a great great uh, initiative. Well, Melissa, it's been such a good a pleasure to have you, but we've run out of time. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I understand. Thank you again for like you know all this. It was like I mean, it has really I had really a good time. So, thank you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, and and have a have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>